little story about how I killed my festival midi, and then how I brought it back to life with the turbine replacement. So I guess I'll start with how I killed it. Uh, long and short of it is, I choked it out over a five year period by not changing my HEPA filter. And I really do think that's why it failed in the way that it did. So what I mean by that is I do exterior and interior painting. And over five years, I've worked with a whole lot of different materials, a lot of wood uh, sanding, a whole lot of fine particulates in the form of sheetrock dust, bondos, things like that. And if you never change the HEPA filter, you're never getting those really fine particulates that get trapped in it out of the system, and you are just choking out that motor. I didn't really know that at the time. It was one of those pieces that always looked clean and like it was in good shape, so I, I, I just didn't mess with it. Uh, I know that was a mistake now. It was it was an easy thing to have done. The information's out there, but I didn't. But you reap what you sow, right? So rewind a few months ago, I'm up on a ladder sanding, and from here I just hear like a little really sad sound. I walked over to it, I smelled electrical burning, and it wouldn't turn back on. So I consult some forums, my local tool supplier, and then I start to put together everything I just told you. Uh, five years, no HEPA filter, fine particulates. That's what happens, you choked it out. So I popped open the top, I looked at all the electrical components, all the switches looked good, everything was in place. So based on my use patterns and what I observed looking at it, it seemed likely that it was just a motor. So instead of replacing the entire unit, you know, everything else is fine, I decided on a hunch, on a pretty good hunch, to just replace the motor. So my local supplier ordered me one, $135, way better than the cost of a new one. Next week I got it, got it up on the bench, 20 odd minutes later, new motor's in, and it works like new, way more suction than ever. So. Today, I pretty much just want to show you how easy it is. I'm not going to pull out the working one, but I am going to pop everything open and just show you how easy and accessible everything is so that if this happens to you, you don't buy a new unit. You just buy a new motor. It's easy. Let's dive in. Okay, I took the bottom portion off, flipped it upside down on the bench, nope, the new HEPA filter, which you should have if you're doing this repair. Uh, next step, T25 bit, four screws. One, two, three, four. They get this cover off. Okay, so now that the screws are out, everything is loose and accessible. Um, but before we dive in, I'm just gonna show you what you get when you order a new turbine. You get the turbine, obviously, with the wire. And then three seals. Uh, this one and this one really, really obvious where they go. They are set into place, and you can see just, you know, everything here and there corresponds with hard plastic in here, so that's easy. This bad boy sits on top of the turbine when you open it up, so just make sure you make a mental note of that. Use common sense. Again, I'm not going to do the actual full replacement of it. I'm just going to show you how easy and accessible everything is, and then you can do it yourself if this happens to you. So, one thing to note, Open up, actually, move this down. Open up the top towards the control panel so that you're not stressing the electrical wires. See all the wiring up here? So, both of these pieces are attached with wires, so I never removed them. I didn't feel like I needed to. You can see this sits on top. This is the actual turbine. It's friction fit in. And the wire leads through that hole down there. One seal here. The other seal at the bottom there. Easy. So what you'll need to do is lift this up. Follow the wire of the turbine to the control panel, disconnect it, 
Go back up here, remove the old turbine, put the new turbine in with the wire going through that hole towards the control panel, snake the wire, plug it back in. I missed a step. You switch the seal before you do that. You get the drift though. Uh, as you put this back in, be mindful that the electrical, con uh, the, the power cord is supposed to sneak through this channel, and this whole thing won't seat properly if you don't do that. So, put that down. Another little tip I have is this thing comes with a little extra wire. There's a little, there's a little too much length in my opinion. So what I did when I put it in for the final time is I twisted it just a little bit to wrap that wire around so it isn't bunched up over here. So seat that, put your final seal on top, and then the one part that was a bit of a pain here is getting everything to sit back down properly because you have this trying to fit into the overall thing and then this trying to go over it. And I found it was just a little bit annoying to do. Oh, that was pretty easy. Um, the first time I had to fight with it a little bit, and I think that's just because just some wires or some foam wasn't seated properly. Um, but this is this is pretty good. That's not a lot of play. I'm not getting resistance. And at this point, just screws back in, and you're in business. Okay, put the base back on, moment of truth. Beautiful. Well, I hope that helped. I definitely recommend trying the new turbine option if you think you burned out your motor the same way that I did. I know I saved several hundred dollars, it didn't take that long, and it was pretty easy to do. So, there is not an option to buy a new turbine on Amazon. As far as I can tell, so you'll have to check with Festool or your local supplier directly. So, if this helped, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.